Hello, Snack Pack. Welcome back to Travel Snacks. I'm Allison, and welcome to a Friday night. What's my hair doing? Friday night live stream. How's everybody doing? Thank you, YouTube, for letting me know we're live right now. <laughs> uh, Lance says, oh, let me put my glasses on. Lance says, so bummed I'm going to miss the live because I'm driving home. Oh, no. Sorry, Lance, to hear that. But thank you for stopping in anyway. What's happening here? Hey, Grant. Happy Friday to you as well. Uh, Grant is our moderator. So if there's anything that I miss, any questions that I miss, Grant's been around long enough to be able to answer pretty much everything. And if anybody gets unruly in the chat, well, he can ban them or put them in a timeout at least. Uh, hey, Tina's the outsider. How are you? How's it going? Uh, what's the weather like for everybody? Uh, I'm still in uh, San Diego. It's, it's been fairly humid, but let me <clears throat> check my weather bug. Hey. Right now it's a nice 76. So it's, it's pretty nice. It has been pretty humid though kind of sticky and gross in terms of that, but the weather has been great. I only had to use like my max air fan and my regular little 10 inch fan or whatever, just like normally I don't have to run my zero breeze or anything like that. And you might notice that this is not my van. I mean, unless I, you know, had a major upgrade. Um, I'm actually house sitting for a friend. She went away for the weekend and she was like, do you want to come stay at my house while I'm away? And she lives right by the beach. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> and you should always take advantage of, you know, different environments whenever you can, because it's great. And you get to like try out different things and different areas. And it's kind of nice to be able to spread out sometimes. And I got to do my laundry. I got to take a shower and like a real shower instead of like a shower stall from Planet Fitness. So uh, I'll be here today, tomorrow, and then uh, Sunday. And I think it's going to be great. Um, I do have a couple other things I need to do this weekend, but for the most part, I'm staying at my friend's house and it's awesome. So that's great. Um, let's see. Hey, HGJ. Hey, Crystal. How are you? Hey, S. Eaton. How are you? Grand Rapids, Michigan, 74. That's good. Grant says the weather is beautiful, sunny and 86. Your, your temperature is higher than mine. Hey, Brenda, how are you? Hey, stay tuned. Hey, Phil Leo. Hey, Steven, which is definitely uh, unruly. Let's see. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? Crystal says 88 feels like 96 today, but tomorrow's back to 100. Oh, no, that's terrible. Uh, hey, Charles, how are you? God bless in Jesus' name. Amen. I saw a video where someone lived in a smart car, and I have... And I have one, a blessing from God. Be careful out there. Yes, amen. Hey, Kayla, how are you? Hey, Shaz. Number 10, Hermosa. Let's see. Stay tuned. Phoenix, Arizona, 102. Uh, let's see. It's going good, Chaz. Thank you. Hey, Lourdes, how are you? Uh, New York City is 73. Okay, that's good. So we're, we're about in the same temperature range. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, Northern Elko County, 94. Okay, so you're a little bit, yours is a little bit hotter where you are. Um, it's been pretty nice. I will say, uh, can't really complain, especially since, you know, all the time that I was in the desert, it was a uh, terrible and listen, anything in the seventies or eighties. Now I just like praise the Lord that I'm not frying up in the van. Um, before we get too far into this, if you're already on here, make sure you put a like on it. So YouTube knows that you like the live streams and you guys are engaged in the live streams and that really helps out. Uh, 94 in Southern Oregon. Oh, that's pretty hot. Is it hot for, for Southern Oregon? 94? Or is that typical, Cindy? Um, let's see. Phil says, last I checked in, Allie was baking in the hot, sub, hot Savannah. She actually looks terrific and must have a pick in the attic like Dorian Gray. <laughs> must be those travel snacks. Uh, I haven't been doing too much snacking except on potatoes and vegetables. Uh, I did, uh, have coffee the other day for the first time in a month. I was sharing this on to my Patreon crew. Um, 
that I got a coffee, one of my favorites, which is like the ice shaken brown sugar espresso. And it just didn't have the same kick as it used to. And I ended up throwing half of it away, which is like, I would never, I would never. And again, I tried again today. I got a coffee from a coffee shop um, down here by the beach. And again, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's just tasted too bitter. I don't know, but I was just like turned off by it. I was like, have my taste buds really changed that much? Um, because I really do enjoy a good cup of coffee, but maybe it's just not still not sweet enough for me. And I was trying to like not put too much sugar and stuff, but I don't know, like being off of coffee for a month, I love the smell of coffee and I love the taste of coffee, but it just, I wasn't impressed. So I don't know. I, I love being a coffee drinker, but I mean, we'll see. I'm not going to like push myself into it if it's just not enjoyable, but I think I'm just not getting the right coffees or something. And I think I'm going to end up having to be like a coffee snob where I get like high quality coffee, where I grind my own beans and stuff so that it's like a smooth cup and I don't have to put as much cream and sugar in, but we'll get to that. I'm not really like focused on coffee right now. Cause I'm still trying to lose some more weight. Uh, Kayla says, I'm good. I'm going back to culture. Oh, cool. On Monday. All right. Awesome. Hey, Edward, how are you? I've been living in an SUV for seven plus years. I never wanted a home. Okay, that's good. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. So um, that's awesome. Hey, Lourdes, uh, thumbs up. Awesome. Cindy says, pretty typical for this time of year. Oh, but it just takes, it just peaks at that for a few hours. Oh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, Lady WS fan life. How are you? Hey, Tammy, how are you? Phil says, I thought you were, was a caramel macchiato gal. I do like a caramel macchiato occasionally, but I really like the ice drinks. Hey, Mary, how are you? Uh, Brenda says, I've never liked coffee, mostly water for me now, not even soda. I've just been totally on water now. Like I really don't drink anything else. Um, I don't drink anything at all, else at all, actually. Um, I've only had water for the past month and... Then, like I said, I had coffee yesterday and today, and I only drank half of it on both occasions. So I don't know. Uh, Crystal says, oh, my God, I have switched to pour over coffee one cup at a time, and I will never go back to a coffee pot. Yes, that's awesome. I am late because I took a walk. Oh, good. Taking a walk is an excellent reason to be late. Um, I always encourage walking. In fact, after this, I think I'm going to take a walk and go get something to eat. Um, so we'll see. All right. So I have a lot to talk about today. Like I haven't, I haven't had notes in a while, um, but I had to write down notes cause I was like, I don't want to forget anything. So, um, let's see, let's see. Um, Hey Mark, welcome. Welcome. First time in the chat. Uh, everybody welcome Mark to the snack pack. Um, all right. So also if this, I was going to say, if this is your first time on the chat, uh, and you're not already part of the snack pack, you might as well subscribe because we're awesome. The community is awesome and welcoming and hit the notification bell since you're already, since your fingers are already over there. Um, Mark says, I just got a high, high roof GMC Savannah conversion van. Ooh, awesome. 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 Um, HD last week I went on a coffee binger that after caffeine with withdrawals hurt for a day and a half. Oh no. Oh no. Hey Johnny. Yes. My van looks a lot different. I got this full size map in there and a whole couch. It was, it was difficult, but I've fit it in. No, I'm just kidding. I'm um, house sitting for a friend. So uh, I'll be here for just the weekend. Um, all right. So I talked about that. Let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. All right. Well, let me tell you just a couple quick things about um, since I last saw you. The last time I saw you, I was talking about all my van problems and how the mechanic felt that I needed a whole new gas tank because the previous mechanic broke a piece off of the filler neck and there wasn't a way to just get that piece They're, They don't make it anymore. And they couldn't just get a filler neck. It had to be the whole gas tank. Um, and so he found, he said it was going to be hard because he had to search around for like all these different pick apart places and junkyards and stuff to find a gas tank because apparently my gas tank was only made for two years. Um, that style or that model. And you know, it was going to be difficult to find. He did locate one a little bit more than he wanted to spend, but he located one. 
So I took the van in last week and like about three in the afternoon, he calls and says, you're not going to believe this, but it's actually the wrong gas tank. It was just a little bit like the slightest bit different, but there was like three connectors instead of two. And he sent me pictures and showed me and come to find out that particular gas tank was only made for one year, the year of my van, 2003. And that was it. And he said he called around. And so they had to keep my van overnight another night because they had already dropped the gas tank. And so I was without my van for the night, which is fine because I could stay here at my friend's house. But the problem is, and I didn't even think about it at the time, is that my van was in the the mechanics bay uh, where they fix the cars for the whole day that day, overnight, and then the whole day the next day. And it didn't get any sun. And so my battery drained. So when I got the van back, my alarm was going off and the alarm for there's the inverter has like an alarm setting that it'll alert you when the battery is like getting to the drained point or a dangerous level. And my, it was squealing and I'm like, how did they not hear this? Um, so I don't know how long it was going off, you know? Um, but anyways, they, they called around everywhere. They couldn't find and locate another gas tank. So they just had to put my old gas tank back on. And apparently what happens is when, I guess when, when pick apart places or junkyards receive vehicles, a lot of times, I guess they'll punch a hole through the gas tank because they don't want it to ignite. So it's already hard enough, apparently, to get a gas tank, but then to get one that's only for one year on my model of van, I guess it was just like they called around everywhere and couldn't find one. So I was like, well, what does that mean for me? Because now what? Can I drive the van? Is it going to be safe? And he said, you can still drive the van. Um, you know, in in a sense, it's safe. You know, the only downside is that when you fill up the gas, you can't fill it all the way to the top now because once it hits the top, there's no stopper thingy that's going to like alert it to to not spurt out. So if I just leave the little like holster thingy in, whatever it's called, the, the gun, the gas gun, I don't know what they call it, the filler. If I just leave it in there, and it gets to the fill, the top, it'll just spurt out a little bit. So I have to stand there and kind of guess like when it's gonna, I just look at the little gauge and once it gets like pretty much full, I just stop it. Uh, the other thing is I guess if I get in an accident, you know, and I get hit hard enough, I guess the gas could spurt out and ignite, but I don't, I mean, that would be pretty unlikely, but I mean, that's, you know, something to think about. Um, so I had just reached like my limit and, you know, last week I had told you guys that like the next day my AC on my van went out. Um, and what's funny is the day before I took it into the show to a, def a different mechanic, uh, it started working again. I was like, it's a miracle. But then I drove it some more and it stopped. So I don't know. I still ended up taking it in and come to find out, um, I took it in yesterday and I guess what happened is the the blower tube was located under the battery and I guess some battery acid had dripped on it or something and it made the tube soft so it wasn't 100% connected it wasn't staying connected like when it I don't know I'm not technical I don't know the thing but like I guess when it was trying to blow it wasn't enough like pressure to blow out so it would be intermittent so he changed the tube relocated the tube above the battery put it in a housing, like a reservoir housing, whatever, so that it won't happen again. And now I, when I drove off, the AC was so cold, like I was actually frozen. I had to turn the AC all the way off because it was like the most freezing. So that's fixed. That cost me $155, but you know, I guess having solid AC is great. Um, so I wasn't even like the most mad about that. Um, so that's basically what's been happening with the van. Um, so I guess I'm just going to have to just live with the fact that I'm using my old gas tank and I just have to be careful about filling it up. Um, and there's a few other things that's on the van that needs attention. Um, but I'm going to hold off on that until after my surgery, which is I'm going to talk about in just a, a few minutes, um, because these things are important, but my van's going to be sitting. So I'll talk about that in a second. Let me just read some of these comments. Uh, let's see. Phil says, just make sure you get 
a great water filter that zaps all the fluoride, chloride, heavy metals, VOCs, and more. Water is not really the healthiest beverage. I drink vitamin water. I would disagree with that strongly. God gave us water to drink, and I think that's the most hydrating thing. And we don't need any man-made things to make, you know, people are always talking about like Gatorade and, you know, liquid IV and all these things. And electrolytes are great, but I'm saying water is health. Like water, our body is made off of water. So when people say that it's not healthy, I don't agree with that. Uh, Mark says, oh, you have a Berkey for your van. That's awesome. A Berkey is a water container and filter. Um, and that's really awesome. Hey, Judy, how are you? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Elva, how are you from South Texas? I, just, I, I travel with the weather. Extreme heat and cold can kill you. It sure can. Hey, Chiquito. I'm so sorry about which. Thank you so much. Uh, good. Thank you. Yes, that was good news on the AC. Uh, hey, Steven. Thank you. I am doing well. Mark says, I drink so much water. Yes, yes. I've been drinking a lot more water. Hey, Terry from North Carolina. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Siren, water is life. I agree with that. I totally agree with that. And I could just tell you from my own experience that uh, I switched my diet up about a little over a month ago. I don't exactly know the date. I have it written down somewhere. Um, and I've been eating mostly vegetables and cut out sugar and dairy, not all of it, but you know, mostly sugar and dairy. And I've been drinking more water. And I can just tell you, I feel a million times better. My skin is the softest it's ever been. Like I was just shocked. Uh, water is so hydrating. My hair is even softer. Everything is great. It's better. So uh, I highly recommend water. Um, hey, agoraphobic owl. Uh, but Brando is what the plants crave. It has like, uh, I don't know what's Brando. What's Brando? Uh, yeah, electrolytes are great. Um, hey, Valerie from Nashville. Oh, awesome. I love Tennessee. I think it's a great state. Hey, Kayla, water is the healthiest drink to put in your body. Yes. Oh, yeah, I bet it is hot in Nashville. Holy. Hey, Mark, coming through with a $4.99. Super chat. Thank you for all the laughs. And oh, thank you so much. Let me give you a shout out. Uh, no, it's, that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. Awesome. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's, oops. Let's give you. Thank you, Mark, so much. And thank you for being here. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you don't want to drink tap water if it's not healthy, but you know, Definitely get a filter if you're in a situation where it's not going to be healthy. Awesome. Uh, I'm sweating because I took a walk. Yeah, definitely. When you get done with those, the walks, sometimes it's like you need your body to just like cool down. Uh, Brando is a drink from the movie Idi Idiocracy. It has electrolytes. I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. Um, all right. So that's basically. Oh, so in terms of my my. The battery that powers all of my things in my van, it pretty much drained, not not all the way, it's not dead, but it, it drained to like a kind of dangerous, I, wanna, I don't want to say dangerous level in terms of it being dangerous for me, but it got to that point where it would not allow me to run more things in my van, you know, so things shut down. Um, and this isn't the second time that it's done that, which it kind of sucks. So I had to write into um, the place where I got my battery and try to figure out what's going on because it was two days without sun or driving. And so it got to this place. And so when I got it back, like I only have 300 Watts of solar panels. So there was not enough time for the sun to hit those panels and, you know, charge up the battery enough until the nighttime came. And then the next three to four days, it was overcast. And so it just wouldn't fill up. Uh, so I just had to like power everything down for the most part. I left my fridge on, but I couldn't cook anything. So I've been like, well, I've been eating like salads or like no cook things. So I'm still trying to save money. Um, so I've been, I ate, ate out a couple times, but I've been just really conserving and just getting like basic things like, a, a like a veggie sandwich or like a salad or rice cooking rice. I was able to use my microwave, but I for sure could not use my Ninja foodie cause it's more like the power consumption is higher and it would just give me an alarm like no. And so, and then I've had to be driving around for like 40 minutes 
um, like at different times of the day just to like get that battery to build back up. So I think at this point, it's been like a week now. And I think it's finally to the point where it's safe because I was able to cook some potatoes yesterday. Uh, but that's the downfall. If And I'm going to, I'll probably make a video about this in the future because, you know, there's times you don't think about that. Like when the van is in the shop or if there's overcast days or something like that, you know, your battery can drain down and it's kind of a bummer. So, you know, that was not ideal. Live in Kansas, you sweat by the time the door closes. Oh, but I bet. Oh, hi, Jackie. How are you? Hey, Meredith. How are you? Hey, Nelson. How is it going? Glad you're here. Um, so, okay. So that's basically what's been happening. And I've just like tried to park where there's the most sun. And so I think I'm pretty safe now. My van's parked outside of my friend's house and it's on the street and it's got pretty good sun connection or whatever. Uh, so hopefully we're okay on that front. All right. Let me see. Where, what do I want to move on to next? Um, oh, real quick. Guess what I got in the mail? Let me move this table back. I got my first merch, travel snacks merch, my tank top. I got my travel snacks tank top. Uh, I got a large uh, which I like the way it fits, but it is a little bit tighter here, um, but it's like looser down here. So I'm still happy I got the large, but if you're, I guess this is for the ladies. I mean, I guess it could be for both, but if, you know, if you're a little bit more like, you know, fulfilled in the busage area, uh, you might want to get an extra large. If you're thinking about getting uh, travel snacks merch, you could get it under the link under the all the videos. There's like a little panel and it shows you like tank top T-shirts. There's T-shirts for men and women, water bottles and stickers. So I know some uh, several of you have already bought uh, travel snacks merch, um, which I'm super excited. So if you guys buy any merch, take a picture and send it to me either by email or on Instagram um, or if you're on Patreon, send it to me on there. Um, actually, I don't know if you can send things on Patreon. Anyways, uh, send it to me because I love to see it and I can share it with the rest of the snack pack of you showing off, you know, like your stickers or whatever. Um, so it's just really exciting to see you guys' faces and stuff when you guys send pictures. So I love that. Um, hold on. I'm getting a message. Oh, Tammy sent $25. Thank you so much, Tammy. Tammy's a huge supporter of the channel and I just appreciate you so, so much. You are a, a huge blessing to me and such, such like a warm hearted person. I just appreciate you very, very much. Um, I always like to give you a hallelujah. Thank you very much, Tammy. I, I, I don't even know what to say because it's just so, so generous. So thank you. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Happy freaking Friday for sure. <laughs> I've been doing great. Uh, Kayla says, I feel drained from the walk. I have been trying to take a walk every day. Good for you. Good for you. Taking a walk every day is awesome. This live deserves a like. Yes. Give it a like. Thank you, Crystal. Yeah, I love the tank. Like it fits nicely and it's it is like thin though, you know. So I have just like a little shelf bra on and it is kind of a summer vibe. Like this tank top, don't think it's gonna be like super thick. It's you could, you know, you can kind of see through. So it's like it would be great for like a, a, a like over a bathing suit or you know, over just like a little bra. Um it's cute. I like it. I like wearing it around and it's very for the summertime, it's very awesome. Um, you can order the merch, uh, under any of the videos, any of the travel snacks videos. There's a little picture of each one and you can just click the picture and it'll take you to the store. Hey, Ginger. Um, so, uh, Ginger, what happens is like, even though like I'm not in the van, I still have things that are running like my, um, my refrigerator's running 24 seven. Um, and my water pump, it's on, like, it's plugged in, but it's, you know, not like running, running, but it's plugged in. So I personally don't know how it drained so quickly. And I have a, an email in to the, 
the maker of the battery, because I'm like, if I have 300 amp hours and if the majority of the time I'm in the sun, how did it drain so quickly? Because I'm only like, I'm not pulling that many much power out. So I don't understand hundred percent either, but I guess maybe just over the few days that it was no sun, no driving, like not getting any power, I guess I can't imagine that fridge pulling that much power, but I don't know. Uh, you look great. And I can tell you I've lost more. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have lost more weight. Um, I think I'm down. Let's see. Any, I think I'm down like 12 to 15 pounds. I don't, I don't know. Cause I don't have a scale in my van. Um, so I'm going to continue to lose as much weight as I can. Thank you, Nelson. Hey, Monica. Welcome. Welcome. Everybody. Welcome. Monica, 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 first time live. Whoop, whoop. Uh, Rebecca, think about getting a charger that you can plug into the wall to charge your breath. So Rebecca, actually it's on the table over there. I had it sent to my friend's house. I just got a battery charger. Now the only downfall about the, it's a lithium battery charger, but the only downfall to it is when you're on the road, you have to plug it in somewhere to like a regular outlet. And so my friend, she lives in an apartment, so there's nowhere for me to like plug it because she lives like pushed back from the street. So I'd have to find somewhere to plug in. Um, when I go to my parents' house, that's easy, but I just got, uh, that, uh, charger today. So definitely good tip. Uh, oh, thank you, Grant, for posting the link. So Grant just posted the link for the merch. So if you guys are interested in purchasing any, that's the link. Oh, thank you, Nelson, for sharing this, uh, live stream. I actually forgot that you could do that. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Wish I could afford to buy your merch. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. It's just for funsies. You know, if you guys want to have some travel snacks merch, it's, it's all good. Um, walking or any exercise is good for your well being as well as laughing. It's true. Laughter is awesome. Hey, Ray, Ray, how are you? Good to see you in jail. What the heck? Uh, thank you, Meredith. Thank you. Uh, Awesome. Awesome, Nelson. Oh, Mark. Awesome. I'm glad you ordered a shirt. Yeah. Um, anybody that gets merch for sure, try to send me a picture because I'd love to see you guys sporting the travel snack stuff. I, uh, Ray Ray says, I can run my fridge for a week on my 12 volt battery. My my fridge like has like never died um, for the most part, except for recently. So I think it's suspicious. So I don't know. Uh, thank you, Nelson. Kayla says, I try to lose weight, but it is hard. I need to keep trying, keep going because I, I had many start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And I would get discouraged. I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, but I finally, like, I got to the point where I looked at myself in the mirror one day and I'm like, what's going on? You've lost it. You've lost your mind. You've gone too far. And I was like, I think everybody hits individually this point where you're like, I got to stop. And then you just for me, it was just like a snap. I was like, I'm done. I got to do something different. And then I just, just did it. So keep trying. Don't give up. Uh, let me go get the charger. I'll show you. Hold on. Whoa. Sorry for the close up. The fine people at, I don't know the name of this. It doesn't have one. They sent me this charger, um, which I have already tried this charger before. So I know it works. Um, I'll have to get the name and put it in the link uh, after. Um, I got it on Amazon. It's this big. So what you do is you connect these like, you know, like a jumper cable to your battery. And then uh, there's two knobs here. Um, you turn one to the voltage that you're like uh, resting voltage or float voltage. And then the other one, I forget what, what it's for. I think it's the amps or I don't know, something. It's on the little just paper here. Um, and you plug the plug into here and then into the wall. So it's, it's kind of a short, uh, cord. So you would probably need an extension cord, depending on if you're plugging it into somebody's garage or like if you were at a campground and they have a regular plug. Uh, so it's not that big. So it's pretty easy to carry around. So if you do have access to a regular outlet, then it's awesome to have for those times where if 
something happens and you like need to keep things going, um, then it's, it's great. So I am grateful that they sent me this uh, because it was not like the cheapest. Uh, it was, well, when I, um, when I first saw it, it was like $150, but then they recently had a, like a sale and it was like $122 or something. Um, so it's not that bad for peace of mind, $122. Uh, I think it's worth it because if, you know, you don't want your fridge and lights to go out. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, Ray Ray says, I have an amp hour, a amp hour for my charger. It takes five hours to charge at hundred amps hour battery. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. This took, uh, I tried it before and it took like, I forget how long it was just a few hours. It wasn't that long. Uh, awesome. Ginger, you could stay in an RV park once in a while and plug your charger. Yes. And get a shower and do laundry. That's a great, great tip. Great tip. Um, Hey, Fernando, how are you? Mark says, I plan on mooch docking at times. My friends better throw an extension cord out like Rapunzel when I pull up. That is hilarious. <laughs> You're like, let me grab that. That is funny. Uh, yeah. If you have any kind of like opportunity to like park at a friend's house or like, uh, you know, if you're on uh, like Boondockers Welcome or one of the apps or something and you have this charger, then it'll be great to just like top up. All right. Rebecca says, cool. With lithium batteries, you cannot go by voltage. You have to wait. You have to have a battery monitor that reads everything going in and out to get a proper reading. Ah. Uh, Okay, I don't understand that 100%, but uh, yeah, I don't know on this paper. Basically, it says uh, you have to blah, 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 refer to the voltage display at the top of the display, adjust the current to the minimum, blah, blah, whatever. This is like a whatever. So I don't know. It does go by voltage, though, on, on there. Um, this, I believe, is 50 or 60 amps. Um, all right. <laughs> okay. If you have 300 amps, it will take a 20 amp hour, 15 hours to recharge. Yes. Well, my, my lithium battery is 300 amp hours battery. Um, a 10 amp charger will take 30 hours. Yes. Do any of you guys use harvest host? I have a huge farm and could allow people to stay. Uh, I did get harvest host, um, for a hot minute and, I lumped it with Boondockers Welcome and I had it for like, I don't even know. I can't remember. I want to say a little, over, I don't know. I'm thinking a month or maybe a little bit more. I can't remember. Uh, I never used it. I just never used it. And so I ended up canceling it. And they had a, I think, 60 day money's back guarantee, money's back, money back guarantee if you don't use it. As long as you didn't ever stay anywhere, you can get your full money back. So I ended up getting my money back because it's a great idea and theory, but I'm not the type of person that likes to like, have to like check in with somebody to like make a little like reservation. I like to just go and park when I'm ready to park. And, and also with the harvest hosts, uh, farms and stuff, or like, um, breweries or wineries, they encourage you to spend like $20 at their shop, which is great to support businesses, but that adds up over time. So I ended up, I think it could be great for some people, but personally for me, I never ended up using it. Yes, 150 for cold AC. Lucky. Yeah, I was grateful, Valerie, that it wasn't more. Oh, thank you, Grant, for posting that. Thank you for posting that. Um, hey, Superfly Lady 75. I'm gonna attempt to sleep in my forerunner with my four-year-old and one-year-old next weekend. I'm excited. I think they will enjoy it. I'm going to do a trial run in our driveway before we sleep elsewhere. And I'm gonna be talking about that in just a second. So I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Harvest House doesn't take anyone unless you have black tank, no minivans or SUV. Yes, that's true too. That's another thing. Um, Mark, that would add up. Thank you for your feedback on Harvest House. Yes, yes. All right, let me tell you a couple more things and then we're going to talk about what Superfly Lady just talked about. Um, yeah, with Harvest Host, you you have to have everything self-contained. You have to have a toilet, I think a sink, um, and some other things. Like they're pretty strict on it too. All right, so let me tell you this last. Okay, I talked about the merch. Um, oh, tomorrow I'm going to be on... For those of you that, 
either know or don't know, um, Glorious Life on Wheels, Carol, um, she's another YouTuber. Her channel is called Glorious Life on Wheels. A lot of you probably already know her channel. I'm going to be on her live stream tomorrow at 2 p.m. Well, I don't know if I'll be on it too, but I'll be on her live stream probably at 2.30 or 3. But um, we're going to be talking about this same topic about, um, and I'll give more detail tomorrow. Um, and then I have a video about that going up tomorrow as well. So it's kind of like a topic about being comfortable in a car because I've gotten some questions about, you know, being able to like start out in a car. Um, so if you guys aren't familiar with her channel, I would definitely go check her out because she's got a lot of great content. So that's going to be tomorrow on her channel. Um, from now on, uh, for the next like month and a half or to two months, I'm going to be having the live streams on Fridays. I know I said I was going to do them intermittently, but uh, I'll tell you why in a second. So um, there's a lot going on right now. Uh, so I'm going to be doing live streams every Friday around the same time. It, it may be a little bit early, a little bit later, probably a little bit earlier, maybe um, like four, four or five Pacific each Friday. And the reason I'm doing that is because I need to prepare because I'm having surgery on the 15th. And I'm not going to talk about that today, what surgery, but I'm making a video that's going to go out on the 31st. So I guess that's what this next Wednesday coming up. Um, and it'll tell you what type of surgery. So that's coming up uh, soon. So you'll know what surgery. And for all of my Patreon crew, my Munch Bunch or Snack Squad on Patreon, you'll know ahead of time because I'll be putting out a, a message and explaining what's happening with the surgery. So anyone that's on the Patreon hears the things first. Um, so if you're interested in Patreon, Grant put the link up. Um, but I'll be doing a video about why I'm having surgery, what the surgery is, and what's going to be happening because I'm going to be out of commission for four to six weeks. And so I have a lot to do. Um, I had to like make like all these um, calendars and stuff of all the content that I'm going to be doing and preparing for because I'm not going to be able to like be making videos for a while. And so uh, that's why I'm limiting the live streams to once a week. And um, the first two weeks after my surgery, I won't be doing any live streams, but I'll keep you posted along the way. I don't, I don't expect you guys to write any of these things down because that's whatever. And then I'll do one live stream the night before the surgery just as like a little encourager. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, okay, all right. So let me read these comments and then um, I've already mentioned I'm gonna have a video tomorrow about this. So let me read the comments and then we'll talk about this. Okay, yes, Ginger, I love Glorious Life on Wheels. Uh, Superfly lady, I could you say hello to my daughter, Malia? She will be so excited. Hi, Malia. How are you? Hopefully I'm saying your name right. Harvest Host doesn't allow minivans. Yeah, that's the only bummer. I don't really agree with that logic because people, I know plenty of people that live in minivans and even cars that are fully self-contained and fully take care of themselves. So I don't agree with that. I, I do understand why, but that was also a deterrent. Mark says, I have a 38 foot, oh my gosh, class A diesel pusher too. I don't judge anyone. And I just got my van. So excited to finish ripping everything out of the conversion. Ooh, that's awesome. Oh, thank you, Grant, for posting the Glorious Life on Wheels channel. Um, her live stream is at 2 Pacific. Um, so I'll probably be on about 2.30. She does an introduction just like I do. And she'll be talking to her crew and stuff. And I think I'll pop in at like 2.30 or 3. Uh, Mark says, I felt bad ripping all the nice leather and wood. I felt bad too when I was doing my my conversion because there was a lot of nice stuff in there and it was still look, it still looks pretty nice. But after it's all done, I was happy that I had the things that I wanted. Um, Ray Ray says, just get a minivan if you want to travel cheap. You can stretch out and sleep in the back of a minivan. Yes. Healing vibes. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Edward says, so I, have, I have an associate's degree. I, I stopped going to college when I realized that I was spending more money. Just, I liked college. I enjoyed learning. Um, after my associates, they were like, okay, now let's set you up for your bachelor's. It's going to be a bazillion dollars. And I was like, I'm out. Uh, it's not worth it for me um, because I enjoyed the learning, but I didn't enjoy spending that money. So I stopped there. Uh, so if I lady, gosh, I can't type. I meant, could you say hello to my daughter, Malia, my four-year-old and enjoy your, yes, yes, yes. Hi, Malia. 
Um, your neighbor's dog, many prayers for your story. Thank you so much. Um, yes, the minivans are getting expensive. Uh, thank you. Stay tuned. Thank you. Four to six weeks recovery. Yes. Teen is the outsider. I have a hundred watt top solar panel on my roof of my minivan, minivan and trying to get my Blue Eddy 800 watt uh, PS to work with it, but the cord keeps shorting out. Oh no. Oh, thank you, Grant, for posting those links. I appreciate that. Yeah, if you'd like to donate to the snack fund, feel free to, you know, it goes towards gas, food, coffee, repairs, not really coffee right now, but repairs and stuff like that. So uh, anything is appreciated, but never required or obligated. Uh, yes, it's going to be fun to be on Carol, Carol's live stream tomorrow. Carol's great. She is so great. And she knows a lot about marketing and doing all these great things. And she is just like, such a wonderful person. So you should definitely be following her channel. Okay. Mark says, do you think someone would want to want the interior? I'm taking out of my conversion van for power swivel cap. Ooh. And a bench that turns into bed. I just want to find someone who would use it. Okay. You know what, Mark, what's funny is when I was doing my conversion, I put some of these things out on like, um, I don't know if I it was, Oh, I think I put it on uh, Facebook marketplace and maybe Craigslist. And I put all that stuff on there and nobody ended up purchasing any of it. And then I just did it for free. And I did get somebody to buy the, not buy, but pick up the wheelchair lift for free. But I ended up taking a lot of it to the dump because nobody wanted it. And it was nice stuff. So I think you could put it up and see what happens. Um, I even tried to give the wheelchair lift to like, you know, like charities or like, uh, you know, churches or things, people that had like vans and nobody wanted it. Hey, Alicia, how are you? Tonight's my first night living in my car full time with my poodle. That's awesome. Having mixed feelings so far. Headed to my gym to shower soon. Nervous about that. You are going to do great. It's going to be awesome. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, because I've gotten a lot of messages, um, not only in the past, but recently about uh, people either needing to, you know, move out of their apartment or losing their job or having too many medical bills. And so they're losing kind of losing their way and getting like overwhelmed. And so either they want to try to live in a car, uh, you know, to save money or they don't have any other choices. And so I'm making a video. It's going to go up tomorrow and I'll go into more detail about it. But I just wanted to do this live stream because uh, I wanted to talk about, can you be comfortable living in a car full time? Because sometimes you need to do that for a while. It may not be just a couple of weeks. It may be a, you know, a little bit longer. And like, how long is too long? Um, so, um, so before we get going too far, in the comments, post um, where you live. And I don't mean like your address. I'm not trying to like go visit everybody or you know steal your identities. But tell me if you live in a house, apartment, a, a car, a van, an RV. Like what type of dwelling do you live in? Um, I used to live in a car. Well, obviously I used to live in an apartment. I've had a house before I lived in a car and then now I'm in a van. Um, but I'd love to know like kind of like who's in here, like what, you know, what kind of dwelling do you live in? Um, and then I can, you know, talk about more like about when I lived in my car and stuff like that. Um, hey, Robert, uh, I just purchased a short school bus. And yes, I know all the funny comments I will get. I'm using a lot of the ideas you have given my wife and I from you. Oh, awesome. That's going to be so cool. Uh, the short school buses are awesome because there's so much room and they're more squared off. And I think they're a little easier to build in. Mark says, my anxiety I have to overcome is designing a shower for my van and then enough power for my AC. So my dogs, oh yeah, that's important for sure. Um, I've heard from, oh, that's my water alarm. I've heard from so many people that built showers in their vans that they end up not using the showers. And a lot of them just end up going with the, like the faucet that like hangs out the back of their, like behind their van. Um, and they just put like a curtain around it. Because a lot of times they think um, they're going to need like a full shower stall, but they end up not using it. Um, Mark says, I sold my house, got an awesome class, a diesel pusher that I live in on my property and now just got the van. I will live in the van and use the RV as a home base. Oh, that's awesome. That is a smart move. All right. Terry says, I live in a two bedroom apartment. Okay. The kid seems like living in a car or van is the thing of the future. I live in a townhouse, but I may lose my job. So I may not have a choice. Okay. Okay. I've heard this from many people. 
Um, thank you, Kayla. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ginger says, I live in my Prius V in the winter and have an RV in a park in Apache Junction, AC, Arizona. That is awesome. I love uh, that uh, some of you have the option of having like a little home base and then having a vehicle. Crystal says, I live in my sticks and bricks at the moment. I'm working on my van for future part-time and possibly full-time van life. Ooh, awesome. Um, I live in a house, but as soon as my youngest graduates, I plan to van life. Awesome. And Monica, I did that same thing. I, um, you know, was living in a town home and I was like, as soon as these kids, you know, get out on their own, I'm going to start traveling. Um, so, you know, it'll come that time will come. Hey, Coco overpriced apartment in Texas. I have been RV shopping. Ooh, that's awesome. House take trips in the van. Awesome. 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 I live in a three bedroom house. Awesome. Grant. Um, yeah, I've heard that the shower could be, uh, kind of a waste of space depending on, you know, whatever, because a lot of times people don't, um, like consider that, you know, even after one or two showers, depending on your gas or not your gas, but your water tank, um, you have to keep filling that up and it's not as easy to find water unless you're staying at campgrounds all the time, then by all means shower. But, um, I've heard that a lot of people use their showers as storage because they just, they're like, I don't even need this. Um, Tina says Michigan and a minivan. Awesome. Mark says house with 5,500 square feet. RV is almost 400 and the van is 55. People think I've lost my mind. No, nah, I don't think you've lost your mind because my van is like 60 square feet. So I get it. Um, 5,500. That's a lot. Uh, HGJ, I live in a studio apartment looking for a place to build my first home. That's awesome. Hey, Tara, how are you? Late to the party, but wanted to say hello. Sending you a hug. Thank you. I received that hug. Um, all right. So um, this may be a story that you guys have heard if you've been around for a while, but I'll keep it super short because I talk about it in the video. But, uh, you know, when I first started out, I didn't really have any intentions of living in a vehicle. I just wanted to travel and I wanted to save money. Um, and then I quit my job and that I don't have any money coming in. So I decided that I would start living in my car as just a little tester. And it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Uh, and I made a video about how to stay comfortable living in a car. And personally, I was comfortable in my car. Um, it depends on a lot of different like factors, depending on like how tall you are. I think that could be a major factor. What type of car you have, that's a factor. Um, and also how you set up your car, because I will say that my back seat was super comfy because I had a blow up air mattress that was specifically for car back seats, but it took up the whole back seat and it deflated a lot. So if I had to do it again, I would probably do like memory foam, like carve it out. But the problem is that the back seat that I had was leather seats because I didn't plan on living in my car. So my car was pretty nice. It, you know, it was a Kia Optima like their top model. And I never intended to sleep in it. And, you know, so I didn't, couldn't take anything out because I knew eventually that I would probably sell this car. So I had to keep what was there. So I had to keep the back seat the way it was. And the back seat had like the kind of like contoured seats. And so I couldn't change anything about that. So I probably could have filled it in with memory foam and then I wouldn't have to like keep inflating it when it would deflate. Um, so that's something I probably would have changed, but the, the air mattress was really comfy when it was inflated and I had all my blankets and stuff. But like I said, it took up all the room. So I really couldn't even sit in the back seat because it was like just all my blankets and stuff. Um, so there's definitely a trade off there. In terms of just living in the car in general, I was personally comfortable because, you know, I would just sit in the front seat a lot and edit and like recline my seat a little bit and I had all my little kitchen stuff in the passenger seat uh, and the trunk was all my clothes and, you know, all my incidentals. Um, and I didn't have a toilet. So that was a downfall. And I think that was one of the biggest downfalls is not having a toilet because, you know, when I mean, you got to go, you got to go. And then you got to find a place to, uh, you know, go into a store or Starbucks or whatever. And you got to like, if you're like out part somewhere, then you got to like, you know, secure all your things and drive away. So that was kind of the only, like one of the biggest bummers was not having a toilet. Um, if I, if I was able to modify my car, 
I definitely probably would have taken out the passenger seat because I didn't need it. Um, and I probably would have uh, put like a toilet as the seat and then put like a cushion over it or had like a cassette toilet and just did like a little puff on the top um, and try to keep the back of the seat. I don't know how I would have did that, but I would have figured it out um, because having a toilet is probably one of the most important things. Like I can get past not having a fridge or a cooler or whatever, or a way to cook because you can, you could figure that out. You can get meals that you don't have to cook uh, or you can, you know, go to restaurants and just conserve. And I'm really good at being frugal and figuring out like cheap meals. Um, and you can actually cook in your, in your car. You know, I've seen plenty of people doing it like uh, life with Anthony. He cooks in his car a lot. Um, you can do it. Uh, but I, I would just tell you that I like to encourage anyone that's either in a car or considering moving into a car, if that's your first option, um, I say go for it because even though it's a little scary, you will get through it because it'll be challenging, but you're strong and you can do it. So I, I like to encourage everybody to give it a try because I was personally comfortable in my car and I miss my car still. Um, so if, if you're on here and you live in a car, um, let me know if you feel comfortable in a car. And if you live in another, if you live in a, in a vehicle, like a van or a minivan, um, do you feel comfortable in it? Do you think you could do it for years on end? Or do you think there's a time limit? Um, I'd like to know what you guys think about that. Like, do you think that after a certain number of years, not like specifically like three years on the dot, you need to get out of living in a vehicle. Like, do you think there's a time limit of being comfortable? Because after a while, I think it might, you know, be harder on your body. And so I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Uh, let's see. Let's see, Ginger, you have to carry so much water in and out. Uh, which weight burns too much gas. Yes, that about the shower. I changed my outlook on life. Yes, that's the greatest part is when you change your outlook and you can make all kinds of things work. Brenda says, Live in a double wide, use my van on weekends and long trips because I hate hotels. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That's one of the major reasons why I started living in my car because I'm like, I'm not trying to spend like, I mean, back then even it was like, you could barely get something for like $60 a night. That was like, not even really. Now, even Airbnbs are like $100 a night, $200 a night. Hotels are super expensive. And I was like, I'm not trying to do that every day. It's just too expensive. Uh, Day, that video helped me out so much when I was Lyft driver. Oh, awesome. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. That's encouraging. Hey, Sue. Love my paid off small condo, 750 square feet. I bought 24 years ago. That's awesome. Cheaper than a big house. I paid 40K back then. Oh, I wish. That is so awesome, Sue. That is good for you. Hey, Deb G. How are you? Yeah, Simon is the best. I do love my van. I do love my van. I loved my car, but I also love my van. Uh, hey, Keto Annie. Yes. Encouragement to Alicia for her first night. That's going to be awesome. I remember my first little test night. I was like so nervous, but it worked out and it was really exciting. Hey, Deb Service. How are you? Tina says, when you were at RTR, do you need a toilet? They, ha I think they had toilets there. Um, like, yeah, I think there was toilets there. And then when you're not at the actual event, uh, you're out in the middle of nowhere. So I would, you're just in the desert. So you could probably just go in the desert. I have a toilet in my van, but if you're in a minivan and you don't have a toilet or a car, um, at the RTR, you could uh, like, I also have one of those, um, women's pee funnels, like that you could stand up like a man and go pee. So you could use one of those. Like I recommend the one called Tinkle Bell. Um, you could use one of those, or if you're, if you have strong legs, you can squat. I'm not, I'm not the one I'm not, I've never mastered that, like squatting down and going to the bathroom because I'm like, how do people do that? Like, I'm just not, I'm, my legs aren't strong enough for that. But at the event, there were toilets because it's at the baseball fields. Alicia, I've watched your vid in how to stay stealth while living in a car at least 10 times. I purchased the air mattress you mentioned. Plus 10 in my windows, 15%. Awesome. I'm telling you, that's the greatest choice you ever made. Um, the, the air mattress is comfy. It, I loved it. Uh, and I'm glad you enjoyed the video. That's awesome. 
Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. GE Van Life and Boondocking, Northern Canada, 80 in a van, have home base for medical treatments full time again soon or bust. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Van Life. Hey, Miles to Go, how are you? Just tuning in from Maine. Awesome. Oh, you love your cassette toilet? Okay. Yeah, my friend uh, Adriana, uh, Many Roads, No Rules, that's her YouTube channel. She has a cassette toilet and she loves it. She has it in her minivan and she, you know, she doesn't have to empty it too often, um, but she just loves it. The passenger, oops. Ah. The passenger seat area will be converted into an area for my two dogs kennel and then have a counter put on top for their kennel. And it will also be center console. That's smart. The kid says shower and toilet is important for me. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let's see. GE van life boondocking. That's 80%. Oh, 80%. Okay. 80% in the van full time again soon. So I so miss it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love living in my van full time, but I, I am getting to the point where I do want to start looking for land. And in fact, I'm not going to be talking about it today, but I'm going to be looking for some land next year so that I can have a little piece of something that I can park on when I would just like to take a little break. Ginger says, oh, oh, you can have a toilet in a car. I bought a bedpan, line it with a garbage bag, throw in some pine shavings, sit on it and use it, then tie the bag up and toss ASAP. My car is very, ooh, that's awesome. I thought, of, yeah, I didn't, my car was not set up like, like, I don't even know how to describe it, but like the where my butt sat on the seat, if I would have raised it like this high, my head would have hit the ceiling. So it, I didn't have a way to have a toilet in my, in my car, but that sounds awesome. Sue says, I would never be able to live in a car. Fair, fair. It's, it can be super challenging. Mark says, my only fear is safety. I live in Kansas and you know what we all carry. I can't use it across many like, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know a lot of people that do carry and it can be definitely something to think about. Um, Alicia, when I list, when I'd list my condo on Airbnb, I'd stay in my car part-time and never had an issue. Curious to see if I'll feel the same doing it full-time now. My main concern is making sure my pup is comfortable. Yes. I don't have any experience with uh, living in a vehicle with a pet, but that just elevates it a lot. I think you're going to love it. I'm so excited for you. Um, GE says, GNE says, I'm 49 and still uh, loving it with disabilities and all Lord keeps me going. Amen. Uh, I'm almost 49 and I still love it too. Um, let's see. Let's see. And okay. Um, audiobook while you're living on a college campus, Walden on Wheels. <coughs> awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. Ginger says they have porta potties. Yes. At the RTR. Yes. Uh, when I was a Lyft driver, did a week in my car, I maxed out at seven days because of not being able to get comfortable sleep. That's a huge one. If you can get your car to a comfortable space, it might take trial and error, but if you can get to that level, that will make such a difference. If you can't get a good night's sleep, you're just going to be wrecked, just wrecked. Like Mark saying, I'm six, three and I can't do a car. You'd have to have a bigger vehicle, I think. Cause if you're not comfortable, it's just, it's going to be really difficult. Uh, yeah, I think the RTR does have porty potties. I thought they had like little, like a little bathroom section to their, I didn't go in their like bathrooms because I have a toilet in my van. Thank you, tea party supporter. Um, Kayla says, I have mastered squatting to go to the bathroom and I'm only nine teeth. Listen, I haven't mastered it. You're, you're ahead of the game on that. Deb G, you can buy a funnel with a long hose at Harbor Freight. Oh my gosh, that sounds bad. <laughs> Hey, Jacques. Uh, let's see. I'm going to just use my van as a big tent. I still have my condo that I bought 30 years ago. I still work. I have flexibility. Oh, that's awesome. I love having the options. I love the options. If you have an option, I think it's great. And don't let anybody put you down for anything. If you only have a car, don't let people put you down. If you have a house and a van or a condo or this or a piece of land, don't let anybody tell you anything. Because people are like, oh, you don't live in a van full time. You're like, you're just not really a new, a true no bad or whatever. It's like, people do what you love. I say this, your life has a finite amount of days in it. Um, 
enjoy it to the fullest. I used to get like locked up when people would say like, oh, like when you stay with your parents or you, you know, get off the road, like you're not doing van life, you're not struggling out there. And I'm just thinking like, yeah, like I would try to like make myself get back out into the van faster. And I'm like, this is my actual life. Like sometimes I enjoy staying with a friend. Sometimes I enjoy getting a hotel. Sometimes most of the time I love living in my van. Uh, when I'm ready, I might go back and get an apartment. Uh, I want to travel overseas again. I want to do all the things in life. Everything that life has to offer, I want to do it. So the people that are mad that I'm not living, you know, that like I'm not in my van 365 days a year, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm not the channel because, you know, I like the, the variety. Now, I love this. I love this lifestyle. I, I love the vehicle situation. But, you know, I'm getting older and there might be times where I'm going to be trying different things. So I say if you have different options, set yourself up. That's amazing. Um, the kid, what is a cassette toilet? A cassette toilet is a toilet. It's kind of like a little like this and you pull out a, like you take off the top and you pull out a section of it. And then you can take that little like container where all the like liquids and poop and stuff is, and you can take it into the bathroom and like dump it and then screw the thing on and then put it back in. That's what it is. Hey, butterfly tracks. How are you? Um, Mark said, I'd die. I'm trying to get there this next time. Tina says, awesome. You can do it. Hey, Ginger says, bedpan is only three inches deep. That's why I bought it. My dog is with me, but you can leave a Prius running. in. Oh, yeah, that's a good thing about the Prius. Uh, City nomads rule. You get a plot of land and you have to worry about creatures invading your vehicle. I'm not just talking about humans. Yes. Butterfly truck 72 with two dogs and a minivan full time. Love it. Ooh, awesome. I love the world's most. Com I have the world's most comfy bed. That's amazing. That's amazing. I am so impressed when people have like pets and they're traveling because I'm already like, listen, I'm at my max just handling myself, just trying to make it. So I think it's really awesome when people are able to make that work. G and E. Yes, I'm looking for land. Also, like you said, it'd be great. Yes. Uh, how fun that you are here. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. I'm uh, Jacques, uh, Jacques says I'm ordering a transit connect that fits in my garage. I love that idea. I love that. Um, with the transit connects they're they're like the best of both worlds, I think, because they're a little bit more compact, but they are still roomy. Um, butterfly tracks. Us hippies used to say, do your own thing, baby. Yes. Yes. G and E P jug and lug a loo lug a loo for the win. Yes. G and E car truck. Don't matter. Best advice is just get out and do it. There's no wrong way is there. I totally agree with you on that. Uh, my little saying is goal, which stands for get out and live. I try to encourage people to just do it. Don't, don't, don't get so like fogged out about all the little details you know, obviously prepare and be safe, but just do it. Take a walk, get in your vehicle, take a drive, sleep in your car one time, try it out. Like whatever you have, use whatever resources you already have and you can build onto that. You can grow with that because over time, you know, things go, they ebb and flow, they change. So whatever you have, I say, I agree with that. You just jump in and just give it a try and get out into nature, get out in the sun. Uh, get out some fresh air. Um, Mark says, just wait till you can purchase used school and wheelchair buses that are electric. Imagine all the battery power on those. By then the battery cost should be much lower. Uh, you know, Mark, I don't think I will ever want a electric vehicle. And I say that because I'm already seeing people having a hard time finding charging stations unless they like just really maximize that. Um, but I don't like to sit and wait. Like when you go to a gas station, you know, you fill up for like five minutes but then when you go to one of these charging stations, I see people sitting there for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I don't even know how long it takes to charge a full battery. I'm not that kind of, I don't want to sit and wait. So I don't know. I, maybe my mind will change over time, but I don't know. Um, Siren says it's called travel snacks, not van life snacks. Perfect. You are doing your life your way. I love it. Thank you so much. That's a great encouragement. Miles agrees with G and E. 
Hey, Solar Fire Adventures. Lease ends in April, but I'm lucky enough to be able to start car life in October. I have a compact Nissan Sentra, which I'm currently taking apart to start my, my bed build. I love it. I love this. I'm so excited for you. Hey, Tanya. Owned home. Want to live in a car or van? You can do it. Of course, the kid. Thank you. Uh, HD Day. My uh, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Ferris Bueller. Yes, I agree. Hybrids are the best of both worlds. Yes, that is actually a great point. Ginger says, Bob Wills just put out a video with lots of stats proving that nomad life is the safest way to live. And he's doing a whole series. Oh, I love that. I need to check that out. Solar fire. It's still hot in South Florida till October. So perfect timing to cool off and prepare for the winter in another state. That is actually true because Florida can get very hot. October is a great, great time. Uh, follow Keith's tracks. Is it key or Kai? Uh, I hear Tesla's can take an hour to charge and longer if multiple cars are plugged in at the same time. Oh no, I'm not for it. I can't do it. No. G and E I have service. I have a service dog. It's challenging, but no problem. Just the same, uh, just the same, just when it's raining, it's a struggle in the moisture. Uh, yeah, I've heard that from pet owners that, um, it gets really difficult when you have to stay in because, you know, they're pets. They need to go out. Um, Edwards or at least you got, uh, yes. Uh, G and E moisture is tough. It rains uh, a lot of people. Yes. Moisture can be very difficult. Um, uh, also I wanted to just like ask for those of you that do live in vehicles. Cause I know there's some people on here that are just beginning, like beginning the journey. So if you guys have any, like one tip, like if you could give even people that don't live in cars, if you've you've watched other channels and you've like kind of seen like a lot of tips, give one tip to those that are just embarking on this journey because people do watch the replay of these live streams. And if they've gotten to this far, we're an hour in, so we're probably going to end up end pretty soon, but I'd love to hear one tip that you have for people. Um, because I think it's very encouraging to know that there's a community of people that are supportive and like, you know, out to just like be an encouragement for everybody. So if you have any tips, post them now, and then we're going to wrap up pretty soon. Um, oh, damp red. I think I've heard of that. Uh, hey, Mimi Ruiz, uh, don't live this style, but bear spray for safety. Oh, that's a smart tip. That is a very smart tip. Bear, bear spray. I've heard a lot of people got the bear spray and it's, it's great. Jacques says, I saw on a YouTube channel where they changed an F-150 lighting at a campground with an adapter. Oh, interesting. That's an interesting one. Butterfly Track says, minimalism and a positive attitude. That's okay. You can give two tips. Those are both excellent. Minimalism, so true. The less you have, the less you're weighed down. And a positive attitude will be a saving grace. Brenda says, if you have too much moisture, just light a candle and it will go away. Oh, I've never heard that. Wow, that's awesome. That's great. Uh, Rebecca says, baby wipes. Great tip. Really great tip. Um, Edward says, live below your means. That's also a great one. Yeah, don't 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 get to the like if you're you got this much money, don't spend this much money. Because if anything happens and you gotta spend this much money, then you're in trouble. So try to live below your means. That's way better. Then you have a little buffer. Okay, miles to go. My tip: if you work at a hospital like I do, shower there and charge your phone while you do that. Smart, smart, smart. Ray Ray, wasp spray is good. Yes, I've heard that. You can shoot at 20 feet and nobody questions why you were carrying it. Yes, yes. I think the only thing with wasp spray, and I could be 100% wrong, so don't take me on my word for this, but I heard that in some states, if you use wasp spray and somebody goes blind, you could be charged with a uh, crime. I Listen, if, you, if you're breaking into my vehicle, then, you know, listen, don't. You, you got something bad on your mind that you want to do, but I would definitely check with your state or where you're at to see about the laws on that. But it is a good weapon. 
um, follow Key's tracks. I've been doing it for a month now. My tip, check crime maps of the U.S. before traveling and sleeping. I used it in Georgia and it's been very accurate. Oh, smart. I used to do that in the very beginning when I lived in my car. I would go on Google and I would type in, what's the crime rate for the city? Or like, because I didn't know where I was exactly going, like what direction. So I would kind of like pick out a few little cities and I'd be like, what's the crime rate? Now they're not always accurate, but um, I don't know about specific crime maps. So you're probably onto something with that. Um, that's good that they're accurate though. HDJ, my inexperienced tip, be used to maintenance and working with tools. Oh my gosh, that's such a good one. Have some familiarity with electrical work. Spend at least a year working on cars just so you're comfortable if something goes wrong. That's an excellent trip. Trip tip. That's a great tip. I would say you should definitely try to be a little bit more of the handy type. Um, I was already fairly handy before, but after the van build, I was like, I know so much more. I'm still not advanced, but I, when something goes wrong, I get on my little like hat, my little like uh, maintenance hat. And I'm like, all right, how can I solve this problem? And how can I do it for cheap? And how can I do it with like basic materials? And it just makes you feel like so good when you can do that. Uh, Jacques said, follow Allison's safety video. Oh yeah, that's a good one too. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. G&E, build around your bed first or you'll be miserable and ventilation, uh, your build should breathe. Yes, 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 yes. That's a good tip. Great tip. Ginger, if you have bear spray, get a clear shower cap and put it on. Oh, this is smart. And put it in your face when you use it so you don't get blowback. Oh, I never heard of that. You guys are coming through with all these great tips that I never heard. That is awesome. Oh, hey, V, how are you? Glad you're here. Um, Boom. Okay, Edward says, also be insured to your net worth. Oh, that's also a good one. Yeah, prepare yourself just in case if you have any problems. Lucky tracks. The map is color-coded, not a rating, just a hot zone map. I stayed in the yellow-green areas, and pro tip these areas are also Uber Eats hotspots for big tips and less apartment deliveries. Oh, that is so smart. That what did, did you just Google that or is it like an app? I'm so curious about this. Hey, Rose Work, how are you? Tina's the outsider. Don't overstuff your vehicle with too much. Okay, I did that on my first trip, so I agree with you on that. I thought I needed more than I needed, and my trunk was like filled to the brim, and so I was always like shuffling things around, putting it over here and then putting back over here. And like, just, it was too many things. I don't even know why I thought I needed so many kitchen things for a person that doesn't cook. I thought I needed all the things and I'm like, okay, calm down. So when I came back from my first little trip, I took out a lot of the stuff and I was like, you just need the bare necessities. If you need something, Dollar Tree or Walmart, you can always buy something on the road, but for the most part, you won't probably need it. So that's an excellent tip. Um, Rose says, been lazy today. Hey, sometimes you need a good lazy day. Um, all right, all right, all right. These are some really great tips. Um, I, I'm, I think this is so great. And I hope anyone that's watching the replay can get some value out of it because I hope you guys on here have gotten value out of it because I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the tips. I try to make videos that are informative and funny and try to give as much information as I can. But I'm just one person. So I'm going to start asking more questions um, from you guys because you guys are in the snack pack. You're my community. This is awesome. And I love um, sharing with each other, like how we're doing things because I've learned a lot just on this one alone. So I'm going to be asking a lot more questions on these live streams uh, just to, you know, just share the wealth because it's definitely a community out here. Uh, miles ago, the Tetris game in your home does, does get tiring. Yes. Um, many doors, seven, 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 how many days, weeks, months does it take to adjust a car life? I don't really know the answer if like to say to adjust, because I don't think you ever, uh, like you adjust, but I don't know how to explain that. Like you, you adjust, but there's always different challenges and you can't kind of have to like go with it every day. Um, but I would say, I don't know. That's a, that's a hard question for me to answer. Because I did a, my first test was three weeks. So those first three weeks were really difficult. But then when I got back out there and I did it for a few more months, I felt really more prepared. So the first three weeks really set me up. 
And there was times where I was like, bro, I don't know. This is, this is really rough. I don't know if I could do this. So maybe a couple weeks, I'd say, you know, I would just keep going though. Don't, don't give up. It's going to be challenging, but don't give up. You'll get past some of the harder things. Okay. Okay. Follow case tracks. I Googled crime map us and a few links down, it pulls up the entire map in color. Okay. It was accurate in my home state of New Jersey and in Georgia. I'd love to know if it's true. Others. Okay. That's great. Okay. Good tip. Thank you for sharing that. Rose says, what map is this? Yeah. Okay. So this is uh follow keys tracks just posted uh, how to get to this. Oh, Hey JJ, how are you? Let someone know where I am and check in with them. Oh, that's an excellent tip. That's an excellent tip. Make sure somebody does know where you're at. It doesn't have to be exact, but try to let people know kind of, kind of on a day to day, like where you are um, at least one friend or family member, just in case. Uh, another tip to go along with that is for those of you that are, um, I don't know if this works on Android. Somebody can clarify for me that has an Android, but for those that are iPhone users, what I used to do is I would take a picture like, um, like towards the end of the day, just any picture, like where I'm at, or like, it doesn't even have to be where you're at, but just a picture because those pictures go to the cloud. And so even if something happened to you, um, somebody like when your friends or family members, when they call the authorities, they can look in your cloud and they can get like the location of the picture, um, a little bit more in detail. So they could kind of know where your last location was. If you didn't end up telling somebody where they could go to your pictures and see like the location on the picture. So I would just kind of snap a picture wherever I went. And so just in case I got kidnapped, they'd be able to like kind of pinpoint me a little bit more. So that's a great tip. Follow Keys Tracks. I think you're constantly adjusting. I think so too. Ginger says, Bob Wells used crime maps in his new safety video. Go watch. Okay, awesome. I'll check it out. Uh, yes. Okay, awesome. It's free. Okay, Edward Moore, keep all interior lights off. Good point. I do this. Unless I have my window coverings up, I keep my interior lights off uh, and don't call attention to yourself. Miles ago, it took me a month to adjust, but I'm always tweaking things and still mess up from time to time. Yes, exactly. I agree with that. I think three weeks to a month is probably like you're getting a little more comfortable. Yes, Grant, thank you for saying it more succinctly. The pictures contain metadata so they can kind of know where you're at without you having to send anything. Ishij, you can set it up that way on Android. Okay, awesome. So it works on Android and iPhones. Okay, Ginger says, don't forget you can add people to find my iPhone and they can always see where you are. That's a great tip. The only little side note is that that does kind of can drain your battery, especially if you have like a lot of people following you, but it is great because it is a safety measure. Uh, yes. What, what miles to go said, uh, Alicia says, never thought of that. Good idea. Yes. It's a good idea about the pictures. There was times where I would go hiking and I would kind of listen. I'm not, sometimes I do ding dong things. There was one time I went to this, uh, this silent retreat up in, Nevada city, California. And I was taking this walk in kind of the woods and there was a path, but then I veered off the path because I saw like a little path that was like, not kind of like the most trek, like it wasn't marked super well, but I was like, Ooh, what's right. What's over here. And I went down that path and I got lost. And so I just took a picture with my phone. I'm like, well, if this is my last day, I'm either going to get eaten by a bear or I'm just not going to find my way back because I got a little lost and I was then a little tiny panic, but I just started taking pictures and I'm like, well, hopefully somebody's smart enough to go on my cloud, on my cloud and find me. And luckily I found my way out, but I was a little nervous that day, to be honest. Um, follow keys tracks. I also park in front of cameras if I can, even at a hotel. Ooh, that's a smart one too. That's real smart. That was butterfly tracks. That was linked to crime rates. Oh, the crime rates. Okay, awesome. Um, Grant says Life 360 is also a way for someone to know your location. It's how I know where Jackie is. Okay, awesome. Life 360. Good tip. Good tip. Good tip. All right. Well, we have a lot of tips, and I appreciate you guys very much um, sharing all these things because I think it's very helpful um, for everybody that's, you know, even someone that's been doing this for years. I'm learning a lot still. Um, because it's not a typ typical lifestyle. So you're constantly learning. Um, before we wrap it up today, I, I want to mention something. Um, this week I've been 
I don't even know. Over the past few years, my inbox has gotten like the most out of control. And there's times where I just like can't even get back to everybody um, because I have a lot of people writing me on email and I got a lot of sponsorship uh, emails and I got just like emails galore. So this week I was like, okay, I'm going to take the time to clear out as much of my inbox as possible. And I started creating folders um, from like, you know, different things, you know, different like uh, emails from sponsors and emails from, you know, YouTube and emails from people that have written me that watch the channel. And I started filtering all these email messages. And I named one, uh, you know, like travel, like snack pack messages. I didn't realize how many messages I've received over the past few years from people like either encouraging me or asking questions or um, just saying that my videos have helped them or like donations, just saying, you know, I hope you're um, doing well. Here's some money, you know, to buy a coffee or some gas money or whatever. And I filtered them all into this folder and the love was just emanating from this folder. I was just like, I just thank you, God, for just like, the snack pack. And I just wanted to like end this live stream by just saying, thank you so much for being part of my journey and for being encouraging to me and to each other, because, you know, one off, when you see one off messages, they're encouraging, but when you see it as a collective and I saved them all because I'm just like, I can go back and read like a lot of the messages and it's just super encouraging to me. And I, and I do apologize for anybody that's ever written me that I didn't get back to. And hopefully a lot of my videos have addressed some of the questions that you've asked because I don't know that I have enough time in the day to respond to everybody all the time, especially like all the comments and stuff, but I do read everything and I am encouraged by it. So I do thank you. And I just want to tell you, I love each and every one of you super dearly, like so much. And I appreciate anyone that's ever taken the time to write me or to encourage me along the way. So I just wanted to round that out today because it was very encouraging to see all those messages. Um, so thank you guys for that. All right. So Rose says, I know that when I lived in my truck, they always had computers to make sure the truck could be located. Of course, if you're not in a truck, thank God for cell phones. Yes. Awesome. Follow case tracks. Try not to drink alcohol after 9 p.m. unless you want to pee on your bed. Did it? Not fun. Yeah, definitely. Try to, even with water, any, any liquids, try to like start wrapping it up at like seven for the older people <clears throat> like me. Um, Hey, Dory, how are you? I just came on. I also love you, girl. Thank you. Love you, too. Um, I can't remember the brand, but there's something called a tile. You can. Oh, yes. Yes. You can add to your keys to find them. Someone could locate you that way. Yes. Yes. That's true. Um, many doors. Triple seven. Great content. Thank you. Thank you. G and E. I don't really have anyone to notify, but in but in a reach can text you coordinates. Awesome. Yeah, definitely, you know, keep your coordinates. Definitely send it to somebody though. Or like, like I said, take a picture. Oh, Apple tile. Yes, that is a great suggestion. Rose says, love you too. God bless you big time. Thank you. Snack pack is awesome. A miles ago, we all love you too. Thank you, B. We appreciate you sharing your journey. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned. So happy to be with you and the community. Awesome. Glad you're here. Good night to all. It was great. Amen. Prayers on your journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are super, super awesome. Um, so we will be back again next Friday. Um, if I can pop in during the week, I will to, to do another live stream. I, I don't know. Cause I have like a billion things, um, that I'm trying to film a lot of videos in advance. Plus I'm doing some van tours that are coming up soon. So, so that's going to be exciting. Um, and like I said, next week I'll be sharing about my surgery. So um, thank you guys for being here. Um, thank you for all the prayers. Um, uh, yeah, thank you for all the donations and the merch buys and all the things. I appreciate it. Um, thank you, Julia. Thank you. Um, and I love you guys. And I hope you guys have a great night. And I will talk to you on the next one. Bye, guys. And gals. <laughs>